Welcome back to episode nine, I think it is, of the Turbo H Gen build series, boys. I'm getting excited because we are actually a lot closer than I thought I was to a first start on this thing. And she's gonna be a ripper, so I'm pumped. In today's episode, it is hose day, which means we are figuring out all the hoses, the routing of them, the sizing of them, everything we need to deliver coolant to the turbo, oil to the turbo, coolant from the radiator to where it's supposed to go into the engine everywhere, fuel lines, the purge line, everything. So. To start, I wrote out on a handy dandy cardboard box here, exactly everything that we need to get this thing running. Except for one fitting for the oil feed, which I'm not gonna know what it is until I pull my oil pressure sensor off. But for now, we can go over this. Don't mind my three-year-old child writing, but we need five eighths heater hose. I'm gonna get 10 feet of it just because we need to run two hoses from the heater core way back under there to this black hard coolant line right there and to the upper coolant housing. So I wanna be able to have enough slack that I can not be touching the manifold because they are going to be running right through there. So we're going to get the high temp stuff. Uh, the place local to me does not have silicone hose, but if you guys can get silicone hose, get that. Bull Blues Performance provided us some 3.8 silicone hose, which is awesome. This is super, super high temp stuff, but it's only 3.8. We don't have 5.8. So we will use that for the coolant lines to the turbo because those fittings that come with the CX Racing Kit are 3.8, which leads us to our next thing on the list. And we're covered there because Bull Boost sent us out that hose. And this hose is super good quality. It's actual silicone heater hose. So if you guys want to snag some, it's super cheap on the Bull Boost website. And to get you guys an extra 10% off, you can use the code DANIEL10. It'll save you 10% at checkout because who doesn't like saving money? I like spending money on expensive car parts and the small stuff sucks, like hoses and stuff like that. So use the code, save yourself 10%. Hopefully that helps you guys out. Next piece we need is 516 heater hose. I'm saying five feet of it just because the throttle body connection on these cars is 516. So there's one hose on the throttle body that runs directly to the black coolant hard pipe that goes to the thermostat water pump. And then there's a second one here that honestly, this car has been apart for so long. I don't even remember where the second one went anymore, but I know that we're gonna be running that second one to the turbo. Not right here, but to where the coolant fittings hook up. And then the other coolant fitting we're gonna be running is from here to that side of the turbo. So we're gonna loop the system and just add the turbo in. Oh yeah, that's where that used to go. From the throttle body right to the upper coolant housing. I'm dumb. So the 516 heater hose is strictly just for this one throttle body hose and we might replace this factory 516s hose but that 516s hose coming from the throttle body to the turbo we are going to need to put a little straight fitting in there that adapts from 516s to 38s and that's what we got on there 516s to 38s straight barbed fitting we need three of them now one of them is going to be for that coolant line the other two are going to be for the purge valve lines which we're getting to 38s fuel emission hose five feet of it again with this stuff you can just grab the silicone hose off of bull blues performance that 38 stuff will work great for fuel and emissions hose. I have some fuel and emissions hose left over from the STI build. So this is 3 8 hose and what we're going to be doing is running this from the purge valve connection back down behind the turbo there. Going to run along right next to the brake booster, come down here and then our wire harness for our purge valve is right here. We're probably need, going to need to cut and extend this wire harness. So I want to mount the purge valve somewhere over here so that we can have the line going in but we'll need a 5 16 to 3 8 adapter fitting because the line coming from the purge line at the back is 3 8 but the lines going into the purge valve are 516s. So you'll need 516s hose connected in here and here, and then you'll need 38 barred fittings to 516s adapters coming out of both sides because going into the throttle body is 38s. So you will definitely need 38s hose going into there. So we're gonna need two adapter fittings to go to the purge line or the purge valve. Next piece we need is a 38 barb to 1 8 NPT thread, which basically looks like this, but this one is a quarter inch barb to 1 8 NPT thread. So that is gonna thread onto this little side block adapter here that we have, and then that hose is gonna run out and into the turbo. So I was gonna run this quarter inch barb and then get an adapter fitting, but I figured why get an adapter fitting when you can just run the right hose straight from the upper coolant housing right to the fitting on the turbo. You just have 3 8 the whole way rather than straight barb fittings. So I am going to pick up one that is this same thread but with a 3 8 barb on the end instead of a quarter inch barb. And then after that, we should be 100% set. The only other thing that I did not put on here is fuel line. And I also did not include the oil drain line for the turbo. Then we also have this timing chain tensioner cover with a 10 AN to 8 ORB or 10 ORB, not 100% sure, adapter on it. And this is what we're gonna run our oil drain line to. So we don't have to drill a hole in the oil pan. And this one is from Jack Spania Racing. And if you guys wanna save money on their site, you can use the exact same code as the Bull Boost site. Daniel 10 saves you 10% off absolutely anything on their website. And we got a couple Jack Spania parts on this thing. We got fuel 
rail. We got this chain tensioner cover adapter thing. We got a couple other parts from them. I just can't remember right now. But they did send out this hardware kit for the fuel rail that they sent us. So we are definitely going to be using this because I need mounting hardware because the factory studs are not going to work. The other thing that you guys are going to need to go out and buy is a quarter inch to 6AN quick connect fitting. Now this quick connect fitting is going to be so that we can run a dash 6AN fuel line from the factory hard line all the way to the rail. And that's going to be running from that little tiny guy way back there. The hose on the left, that's the darker hose, is your fuel line. The one on the right, that's the bigger hose that's open, is the EVAP line. So we're going to put the quick connect fitting on that left fuel line, and then we're going to run a 6AN hose by the ECU, just like everything else. It's going to run up and to our fuel rail, which is from Jack Spania Racing, and it looks super pretty. And last but not least, the oil drain. The CX Racing Kit does come with an oil drain fitting, but it is just a straight barbed fitting, and I wanted ours to be a little bit nicer than that. So Jack Spania Racing sent us out this 10AN fitting that will bolt up right to the bottom of our turbo. Now, the turbo that CX Racing provides in this kit is a Garrett style turbo. So it is a Garrett style oil drain flange. So this should bolt right up. I'm gonna put a little bit of black silicone on the gasket as well when we bolt it up, but this should work. Then we can run our dash 10 AN line all the way from the turbo around the block to the chain tensioner cover. And last but not least, but is probably the most important piece of them all is the oil feed line. Now, CX Racing does supply a fitting for the oil feed that goes on the turbo. And I got a lot of comments on a couple of my previous videos installing this kit that you need to get a fitting with a proper size oil restrictor for this turbo or else you just blow the seals out. And if you guys look at the one they supply you, if you guys get the ball bearing turbo, which this one is the ball bearing turbo, you will need an oil restrictor. Now, if you guys look at this fitting, there is a restrictor in there. You can see that the fitting size is huge, but if you look through there, there's one little tiny air gap and that's your oil restrictor. So this is gonna work perfect. So we're gonna get that threaded onto the turbo and then the oil line that comes with the CX Racing Kit, I've also heard people say that it sucks and that it leaks, but we're gonna send it, we're gonna try it out. It's gonna thread right onto there, run underneath our ignition coil cover and come right out to the back of the block there, right by the oil pressure switch. Now I'm not sure what the thread pitch is on the oil pressure switch, but we are gonna get a either two or three T adapter fitting that's gonna thread into the block. And then we can thread our oil feed line on, the oil pressure switch and possibly an oil temp sensor. If I wanna run it, I'm not 100% sure yet, but we will see. So I'm gonna head to the store right now and pick up all this stuff. One more thing I wanna mention before we leave, because I forgot to mention this and you guys are probably wondering, Daniel, why are you buying all these fittings if the CX Racing Kit comes with an oil filter sandwich plate? I am not a fan of oil filter sandwich plates. I never have been a fan of oil filter sandwich plates. And you can see all the scratches and all that this sandwich plate already has. So if we wanna run the oil temp sensor, I might run this one day. But instead of running this, I would much, much rather just get adapter fittings for the oil pressure switch so it's all threaded, it's all sealed, and we're not gonna have any leaks. So we always have the sandwich plate here if we wanna try it out, but I wanna go grab those fittings while I'm at the store right now. It is the next day now, we are back from the store getting a whole bunch of hoses and fittings and stuff, and I think we got everything we need to finally get this thing together. So to start, the first thing that I forgot to mention about this kit was the vacuum lines for the wastegate. Now there's gonna be two ports on the wastegate that are down there, two barbed fittings. Those are gonna go to the boost controller and to your intake manifold. And the fittings that are on that wastegate from CX Racing are quarter inch. So you could get quarter inch vacuum line, but I'm gonna run this quarter inch fuel emissions line. It is a little bit thicker and I know everything's gonna get really, really hot in that area on the car. So we are definitely gonna run some thicker line. So we got quarter inch fuel emissions hose here, and then we got a whole pile of hose on the ground. So here's our quarter inch. We got our 3.8 silicone line from Bull Boost. I went over to our local hose and fitting shop and got some more 3.8 line. This is fuel emissions line. This is gonna be for our EVAP line so we can retain our factory purge valve. The silicone line is gonna be for coolant. Then we got some 5.16 heater hose. This is gonna be so that we can retain the factory coolant lines that run to the throttle body because those are 5 16 And I'm also gonna replace this line right here that's 5 16 I think. Just because this 5 16 hose looks a little bit beefier than that. And like I said, there's gonna be a lot of heat here from it being boosted that was not here before. So this beefier line is gonna help. And then we got a whole bunch of black 5 8 heater hose. So we can run new line from the heater core to the upper coolant housing and to this black coolant line right there. Then as for fittings to adapt the 5.8 to 3.8 line, I had to buy two separate pieces here. One is a male 5.16 fitting and one is a female 
three eighths fitting. I couldn't get just any straight fitting like what I have here. They didn't have any step up fittings that went five sixteenths to three eighths. So we had to make it work and get two separate fittings. I could probably find a plastic one somewhere, but this is gonna work. We just need to put thread sealant on those threads and tighten her up real nice and tight and she should seal because budget build, boys. I am going around trying to find the cheapest stuff for this build that I possibly can that's gonna be functional. So the next thing I'm gonna mention just to get this thing running for now and we're gonna see if it works, see if it leaks because like I said, we're gonna use everything from this kit and test it out. I'm gonna use the oil filter sandwich plate. I know I said I wasn't going to. I'm gonna put a little photo on the screen here of the adapter fitting that's on Jack Spania Racing. If you guys wanna run the oil feed line directly from the oil pressure switch, buy that fitting. It is the exact adapter fitting that you need. I'm gonna get Jack Spania to send us out one so that when this freaking sandwich plate leaks, because I'm assuming it's going to, we can just install that quick. We got the line already there. It'll be quick and easy. We'll just have to clean up a mess of oil from taking the oil filter off and stuff like that. So I got the sandwich plate here. All of the threads in these three holes are 1 8 NPT thread, just so that you guys know. And this oil feed line also has 1 8 NPT thread on the end. Don't ask me how I know. Actually, I'm gonna tell you anyways. I threaded that into the sandwich plate by hand and I went to thread it out by hand and bind it up. I literally had to run a tap through and clean up the threads on that and clean up the threads on the oil feed line. It seems like with the CX racing kit that I have had to clean up threads on like 90% of the parts, even some of the bull boost ones. So it's just taking that extra step and being careful to make sure everything gets installed perfectly and you don't have issues. So I know I've been talking a lot in this video so far, but there was a lot of information to cover here with hoses and fittings and all that so that this is easy for you guys. So our first step that we are gonna get knocked out here is we're gonna take care of getting the radiator hoses 100% installed with hose clamps and everything. And then we're gonna get the coolant lines built, the oil lines built. We are gonna get it all done. And then I'm gonna show you guys what we did. And then we gotta be getting close to a first start on this thing. Like once we get the fuel lines built and everything and we get the sandwich plate on and all the lines built, I'm pretty sure we can start this thing. So let's get it. Figured I'd stop the time lapse for a sec just to show you guys a really, really important step that you need to do. So, so far, we got the 516 line built from the throttle body to this coolant pipe. We got another 516 one run to a 516 to 3 8 adapter fitting, which runs to a 3 8 hose, which is going to run to one of the coolant lines on our turbo. Then we got another one coming right off of the 3 8 to 1 8 NPT barb fitting that goes to our upper coolant housing, runs back behind here, and that is going to go to another port on the turbo. I wrapped this hose with the heat sleeving just because it is going to be close to the exhaust. And then the heater hoses on the back are completely made. The upper hose runs under the manifold right to the back of the upper coolant housing here. That is gold heat taped. And then on the lower heater hose, I actually used the factory one and just flipped it and it bends perfectly over to the black heater hose and it doesn't hit the wastegate lines or anything. So we only needed to build one 5 8 hose. The other one we were able to use the factory one, which is cool. Then you can see right back in there, we got our purge line built. So so that one is also gold heat taped. I got a little fuel line hose clamp on there just to make sure it doesn't come off, but it routes up above the brake master cylinder. I zip tied it to the engine harness right up there. I still haven't cut the zip tie yet, but you guys get the point. I ran it back behind the brake master cylinder and it comes down under the ECU and both of those hoses come out right here. And then we're gonna run them up to our throttle body connections right there. Now the other hose that we gotta run, which is the one that I have out right now is our brake booster hose, which connects right to the vacuum booster on our brake master cylinder. Now this one is super, super important. And I have seen some of the comments from you guys telling me, Daniel, make sure you cut the check valve out of the stock line because the vacuum booster does not have a check valve in it from factory. Don't worry boys, I got you, I found it. So here is a 5 8 line that I just finished building. I gold heat taped it right to the point where it's gonna be going behind the ECU. And then right by the ECU is where we are gonna hide our check valve so you can barely see it. And then we are gonna use a straight 3 8 to 3 8 barb fitting on each side of it to adapt the factory check valve. So let me show you guys where it is. This is the factory hose that goes into the vacuum booster and then runs to those hard lines from stock that are all right here. Goes to another pipe that goes to another soft hose that goes to the intake manifold here for 
vacuum so that you get breaks. Now, if you look at this hose real nice and close, you can see right there, there's a little lump in it. And you can kind of feel it if you run your fingers along here, there is a lump right there. It is a check valve. And what the check valve does is it allows air to go one way and not the other so that you don't lose vacuum assist on your brakes. So we need to cut this on either side with enough space for a bar fitting. So we'll probably cut it here and give us some space probably here. And then we're gonna install that in line with our hose that we're building right here. Now, ideally you want this as close as possible to the master cylinder, but in our situation, since we are extending this line so long, it's gonna be instead of a foot away from the master cylinder, it's gonna be about two feet away from the master cylinder. So instead of being right up over there by that blue clip, it's gonna be right down here by the ECU. So it's a little bit further away, but if we have any issues, we can move it again. I think it's gonna be okay. So I cut the hose out and I wanna show you guys something before you put this in, because this does have to get installed a certain way. Wait. You need to take your mouth and literally blow into this hose. Five ball that way, no air comes out. Five ball this way. You can hear air coming out of the hose. So the air flows that way and won't flow back that way. So what I'm gonna do is install this right in behind this ECU cover down here. And I'll show you guys where I'm gonna put it just to make it make sense. It is gonna be tucked up underneath here so that then that 90 degree fitting is gonna come out just like that. Nice and clean and hidden and you're not even gonna know it's there. And then we're gonna have a barred fitting here that connects it to this hose right by our heat tape there. And then we are going to extend out this hose right to our intake manifold. So it should work perfect. We are getting real close now, boys. I got a quarter inch evap line run for a vacuum line. Not sure if I'm gonna run this yet or if I'm gonna pick up some actual quarter inch silicone vacuum line, but this stuff's pretty thick and I gold heat taped it where it goes onto the wastegate. So that's just on the lower nipple of the wastegate. I gotta get one more on the top nipple of the wastegate, but this is the only hose I got. So I gotta pick more up tomorrow. So we're not doing that in this video. But in this video, what we did do was build our little check valve. So it works out perfect that that 90 degree bend is there because this bends right there and I think our battery tray is going to sit over all this so that should tuck nicely under our battery tray and come up to our throttle body following this intercooler pipe and we should be able to zip tie these lines to the intercooler pipe and make them nice and secure so that line's run our purge line is run to here we still need to put our purge valve in line and I get a side wear from there all the way to here that I am going to be installing the purge valve because we need to put this somewhere in line there and we need to have this wiring connect reach this purge valve. So wherever we relocate it, it's just a two wire connector. We just gotta extend two wires, which is not a big deal. But outside of that, we got both rad hoses fully installed. We got hose clamps on them all, including the lower rad hose, which is gonna be very hard to see, but it is down there underneath the intake manifold. You guys will see how the rad hoses go. They are aluminum hoses that come in the kit with four silicone couplers, and they got hose clamps for all of them. You can see the lower run running across there and this upper one coming down under the throttle body. So we're close, boys. We got the whole whole cooling system sealed up at this point other than to the turbo. And the last thing we got to do before we get this turbo 100% installed is run our fuel line. And we're not running a return system in this because like I said, this is a budget build. So what we're going to be doing is running a line from the factory fuel line, same loop as where our brake booster line and EVAP line went to. And then it's going to be coming up to our fuel rail over here. And then we're just going to put a block off cap on the other side of the fuel rail. So it's a returnless system and it's still running off the stock regulator in the tank. We're just gonna slap a 340 liter per hour DW fuel pump in it. So Jack Spaney Racing sent us out some AN fittings, which we actually have a whole bunch of them from Jack Spaney in here. We got a whole bunch of 10 AN line two, which we're gonna be building for our oil drain off the turbo and that whole timing cover piece that I was telling you about. So again, if you guys wanna save some money on their website and get 10% off, you can use the code Daniel10 at checkout. It'll save you 10% because who doesn't like saving money? So while we're building AN lines, we are gonna build two in one shot. We're going to build the 10 AN line and we're going to build our 6 AN fuel line. First off, building AN lines, you're going to need a couple of things. Your AN line, that's 6 AN. This is 10 AN. 10 AN lines are some beefy line. You're going to need an AN wrench if you don't want to scratch your fittings. This one is specifically a dash six AN wrench. This wrench, I will put a link in the description to it. I think it's like $20 Canadian and it goes all the way up to 16 AN. It's completely adjustable. Next tool you're going to need is a zip disc some painter's tape or whatever tape you got and your 
AN fittings. I have a straight 6 AN fitting here and a 90 degree 10 AN fitting here. This one's gonna be for the bottom of the turbo. This one is gonna be for where we're connecting to the factory fuel line. Last thing you need that I forgot to mention was an air gun. This is to blow it out after you get a whole bunch of crap inside the line because you do not want that getting stuck in your injectors or in your fuel system at all. Forgot the last tool you're gonna need is a butane torch. Now, the reason that I use one of these is because Jack Spania cut these nice and flat right from their assembly line, but they are pretty frayed on the ends. So don't go too crazy with it because you can create a lip and cause it to leak. But I like to just melt the ends a little bit just to keep it nice and smooth, prevent it from fraying like crazy. And now you can see you got a nice hose end. Now, what I like to do is take a little bit of assembly loop or oil. You're gonna put some oil on the threads of the AN fitting itself, spread it out on the threads so they're nice and lubed up and it glides on easy. And also take a little bit and just shove it into the tip of the line, just so it glides on nice. Now we're gonna grab our air gun, blow out the line. We're gonna grab our end of the AN fitting and we are just going to push this over the end. Just kind of rotate as you push it on, it'll walk itself on and then you'll feel it once she bottoms out. And this can take some effort sometimes to get it all the way to the bottom. Now you guys aren't gonna be able to see in there very well, but if you do look inside of there, you can kind of see that the hose is bottomed out on the little lip inside of the AN fitting. So now that we got that, we are gonna take our other side of the end fitting and we are going to thread this in just by hand for now, as far as you can to make sure we're not cross threading anything and nothing's binding up. And then once it stops, if you have AN jaws, you're rich. I don't have AN jaws, so I just use some paper towel, tighten the vise onto my AN fitting very, very lightly because I do not want to squish it. Then we grab our AN wrench and we can slowly twist this fitting together and it should go in nice and smooth. The nice thing about this wrench that's adjustable is it's a closed end, so it really, really grabs the AN fitting. And then once she bottoms, I'm OCD, I like to just tighten it until the hexes line up and then call her good right there. Mint, our first AN line is built. Give her a tug, make sure it's nice and tight and she is on there, boys. That's one end done. At the start, I told you to whip out the zip disc and the tape. That is gonna be for when we cut our other side of the line. But in this case, we didn't need it yet. Now we got the first half of our 6AN line built, so we can get this in the engine bay. Then we could go get this threaded onto our quarter inch quick connect fitting to 6AN adapter. So you run the 6AN line all the way to the fuel rail, and then we can cut it to length there and just mark it with a white paint pen. But while we're here, we're just gonna repeat that exact same process with our 10AN fitting. This is looking super good so far. All of our lines are coming out in behind the ECU down there. Nice and clean. If you look from the back, you can see where the AN line hooks up for the fuel line, where our purge line's going. They're all going up above the brake booster and running along underneath the brake master cylinder right there. Coming under and then we're gonna have to have a battery tray in this area. So I'm trying to decide if we're gonna do these lines going underneath the frame or if they're gonna come on the inside of the intercooler pipe without hitting the shifter linkage. They just got to make it to here without contacting anything. So we're gonna have to figure that stuff out once we get the battery in. So we're not gonna finalize this side of the lines yet. At least we got the check valve made. We got our AN line made. We'll just have to cut this to length once we get there. And same with our vacuum lines for the wastegate and our brake booster line and our purge valve line. We still gotta install the purge valve somewhere. But before we do that, I wanna get the turbo in and get that drain line run and stuff like that. So the last thing we are gonna be able to do in in today's video is get the oil drain fitting silicone onto the turbo and get the turbo set on there. And then we could possibly figure out how we're routing that oil drain so it has a constant downward motion because if it gets flat horizontally, all that oil is just gonna sit in the line and that is not what you want to happen. You want it to be consistently draining down. If that's the case, that's not gonna work. We're gonna have to pull the oil pan, drill a hole and do it that way. So the oil drain that comes with the CX Racing Kit is this guy right here. It's just a regular barbed fitting and it is the exact 
fitment of this oil drain on the turbo. It fits up picture perfect. We got a fitting sent out to us by Jack Spania Racing and it looks like it's more of a universal fitment. The drain hole is smaller than the drain hole on that one, but overall diameter should realistically be the same. But it does fit a little bit loose because it is a universal one. The thread holes are a little bit misaligned. And if I'm being honest with you guys, I can't find the oil drain gasket that I had with the CX Racing Kit. So this is the only one I got. It does not match up very good. So we're gonna put a little bit of silicone on it too. But first, we're gonna clean both flanges with brake clean. Make sure they are nice and dry. That one we don't wanna spray brake clean in the turbo. So we're gonna spray it on the rag. Give her a good wipe down because there is a lot of oil sitting on this flange and that silicone is not gonna seal if we just put silicone on oil. So what I'm gonna do is take this, the right stuff, which is just black gasket maker, and I'm gonna run a very light bead around the oil drain. Doesn't have to be much, don't cake it on there. Set that on there. And now, we're gonna set this on the turbo and it should seal 100%. I barely put any on there and I put too much. As soon as it squeezes out, don't use it cause you're gonna get oil in your freaking or silicone in your oil galleys. You're not gonna have a good time. So I'm gonna wipe away some of this and then we're gonna get it slapped right back on there. No squeeze outs this time, should be perfect. I don't know what the torque spec is on this. Make sure she's tight. I like using Allen key bolts on these because you can actually get at them. Imagine trying to get a socket in there with an AN fitting on it. Would not be fun. Those are nice and tight. And now we got an oil drain, boys. Next thing I'm gonna do while we're here, since I'm kind of forgetting about it, and I'm gonna forget about it if I don't do it now, we're gonna tighten the oil feed on there. The only reason I'm mentioning this on camera and not just doing it off camera, do not put thread sealant on the threads of the oil feed. You can get the thread sealant in the turbo, it'll clog up the seals, and that's not what you want to happen. So we are gonna get this started by hand, and and it is a 13 mil socket. So use a 13 mil deep socket. Throw it around all the way by hand so you don't cross thread anything. And now we'll take a ratchet and snug her down. Just one little snug like that and she's good. If it leaks, then we'll use some sort of sealant. Do not use sealant at the start. All right, so we got pretty much all of our lines completely made. We got the oil drain installed on the turbo. We got the oil feed installed on the turbo. Now the last lines we really got to run is the oil drain line and the oil feed line. And those are the two most complicated ones. Then we also have to attach the second half of all the other lines that we built. So I got the turbo just sitting here right now. I ended up actually going ahead and grinding off that little tag that was on the turbo. You guys can see the two little rivet spots so that this intercooler pipe can actually clamp onto there properly. But I still saved it. GT35RR, it's got the serial number and everything. eBay turbo, baby. But honestly, that's gonna be it for this video. We've made a ton of progress on this thing. I'm super, super happy with how this is all coming out, but it's getting late. And I wanna try and pump these videos out for you guys as fast as I can. Because we've been slacking on this build series and now we're finally going full tilt on it. So hopefully you guys are enjoying the Civic content. Peace out, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something in today's video. I'll catch you guys in the next one.